Hi everyone, welcome to Pop Out Workshop. This is the final installment of the series that I have done building this art studio. Now in this video, I'm going to be building the actual uh, six drawer cabinet that makes up one end of this craft table. Now in the previous video, I've already built the bookcase end of it to be able to store the books and different supplies. This six drawer cabinet is gonna be perfect to be able to hold the different art tablets and supplies that need to be in this uh, studio. And don't forget, in another video that I did, I built a little craft table, a little small desk, that's also gonna be in this room. So what I'm gonna do is link these different videos that I have done right down in the description so that you'll be able to refer to them. But this build today is gonna be a lot of fun. Six different drawers that go into this cabinet. It's time to cut the dados for this cabinet. And typically when I build cabinets, I don't use the dados, but the dado construction is much stronger. And this cabinet is going to get moved around a lot from one side of the room back to the middle and then back to the wall again for space, and depending on the project that's taking place. So I'm using the dados. Now this dado is being measured two and a half inches from the bottom of the um, cabinet. And I'm going to show you exactly how I did that to be able to get the dados exactly cut correctly. First step is to be able to measure two and a half inches from the uh, fence to the blade to be able to set that first cut. It's important to note this is measured from the fence to the outside of the blade. So now that we've made our first cut and we did it with this, the short portion of this jig, I need now to move this fence over because I want the dado to be closer to the bottom of the panel. So we're going to change this now and we'll rotate this over and we'll put that right into this position and again move the fence back so it just touches the jig just like that. So that moved it over the three quarters of an inch the same amount as our slot right here. So we'll tighten this down, we'll slide this out of the way, and we're ready to make our second cut. So now you can see the second setup where this blade now it has been moved over closer to the bottom of the panel itself. Had I wanted the dado to be on this side, the only thing I would have done differently is set the curve maker up with the long side in first and then move the fence over. But in this case, this will be the perfect setup. So now I'm ready to run the two sides through the saw. Now this is a perfect setup to be able to save time and to be able to get both sides of this dado cut. And it's very exact using this process, which means time saved in the shop. And when you're on a tight schedule, every minute counts. So I'm gonna run this second one through. And after that, I'll have the actual parameter of that dado set, and I know that it's gonna be perfect. The only thing I need to do now with the table saw is hog out that middle portion to be able to eliminate that, and you'll be able to see the results having a perfect dado. This is a great method to be able to use, and unfortunately, it's just not shown that often in videos. In fact, quite frankly, I don't think I've ever seen it shown using the curve maker in conjunction with the fence. I'm now gonna cut out the middle section and I'm gonna do this simply by moving the fence over roughly about an eighth inch at a time and cutting that material away. So after making a few cuts on the table saw, you'll be able to see the results when I get this panel flipped over. Now this is my test piece that I'm using because this is the same thickness as the panel that's gonna go into the bottom. And you can see that fits absolutely perfect. And that's what you wanna be able to do. Here's a close up look at that dado and you can see it looks absolutely amazing. <laughs> and the most important thing is the correct size. Now when you do this process, you wanna make sure that you cut both sides, the left and the right at the same time. Another thing that I normally don't do is lay out where my drawer slides are gonna go and actually install them. But with six drawers, yeah, this is important to be able to do. Now I use the blocks to be able to have the alignment perfect exactly where I want it. 
and that to me is much much better than using the ruler itself. I slip in the scrap piece of wood where the dado is and then I can put in my block of wood that's the correct spacing and line that up make sure that it's straight all the way down and yes I could use a longer piece so I wouldn't have to slide it but this works just as well. Now as far as the front, this is representing the front face of the drawer and it needs to be the three quarters of an inch but it also needs to be set back an additional sixteenth of an inch for this drawer slide. So that little scrap piece of wood there, that's perfect. It's exactly what I need. Now by being able to do this, I can duplicate this and have accurate results for all six drawers. Or, in other words, you need to do this 12 times because you've got left and right sides. And to me, this is the most accurate way to do it. The other really nice thing, this makes it easy to be able to put in all three screws on these drawer slides at this time. And that's something you can't do easily when you have the cabinet actually built. So you need a screw at the front, the middle, and the rear of the drawer slide. So after about well, roughly 30 minutes, I had all of the drawer slides installed and it's now time to be able to assemble the cabinet. And believe it or not, this does save a lot of work. Now you'll notice I have a longer drawer slide at the bottom. Yeah, that was one that I had in the shop. The design was changed and we added that sixth drawer. Now earlier on the bookcase side, I forgot to put this front piece in. And again, no tape measure. I'm using a half inch piece of plywood to be able to put this front piece in. I like having it recessed back about a half inch and this plywood spacer is perfect. And again, to me, this is a lot more accurate than trying to use a tape measure to be able to get that spacing. I use this plywood 90 degree jig in conjunction with the clamps because it's like having an extra set of hands in the shop. And when you're working with a big cabinet, this is really a lifesaver. So I can set this up right there in the corner of the cabinet, clamp it down with the um, clamp, and that holds it in place. And that's like having an extra person in the shop holding that corner. And then when I put in the bottom panel, I will again clamp it, and that holds it together. Now I like to be able to put this together to begin with without the glue and nails just to test fit everything. I know that's an extra step and it could probably be eliminated, but it's something that I've done for years and years and believe it or not, it has saved a lot of errors from happening and having to redo stuff. Now once this corner clamp is in place, I don't have to worry about it falling apart. I can simply go ahead and move on to the next section and put up the other panel. Now I'm going to use the exact same technique. I'm going to use that right angle jig with the uh, clamps to be able to hold this in place. That way I don't have to worry about the bottom panel falling out and I can then move and put in that next panel. And that way the whole cabinet will be together and my helping hands are doing its job. After test fitting everything and making sure that all this um, cabinet or the box if you will all fits, then I can take it apart, add the glue, and use the nail gun and put this together permanently. And I have the confidence at this point to know that everything is going to fit real well and I'm not going to have any problems that is unforeseen at this point. Now in some of the build videos that I've done, I've actually showed simple ways to build cabinets without using the dados and without using glue even. Well, this cabinet's not going to be in that situation. Those were fixed cabinets that were mounted permanently and never to be moved. That's not the case with this one. I know this one is going to get moved around the studio a lot and it's going to be very important for it to be as strong as possible. Thus, it's important to have the dados, the glue, and the nails to be able to hold it firmly together. I'm adding a pipe clamp here to be able to hold this in place to make sure that it's sitted properly into that dado and then I'll be able to nail the uh, panel in position. One of the little tricks that I like to be able to use is to use a framing square or any street edge for that matter to be able to make sure that my nails are straight and they're going into that material. The worst thing to happen 
is to have that nail shoot in there and not hit anything and be poking out inside of the cabinet. Using a straight edge like this ensures that that does not happen. Once everything is nailed, then I can remove the bar clamp and set it aside because the nails and the glue is going to hold everything in place. At this point, I'm ready to repeat the process and do the exact same thing with this other panel. And now that I have all the glue in, the panels in place, I have it all clamped together, making sure that it's exactly the way I want it. Then grab the nail gun and I'm ready to nail it in place. The nice thing about this, I don't have to worry about anything moving at all. And the other nice thing is, I don't have to have an extra person in the shop. I can do this as a one person operation. And in my shop, that's pretty important to do because I don't have someone that can come down and help out. My kids are all doing their own thing. And the last step before putting the back panel on is let's check for square. So I'm going to measure from one corner to the opposite corner and get that diagonal measurement. And I need to do this both ways to make sure that that measurement is exactly the same. Once that's done, then I can go ahead and nail on that back piece. But I do want to point out and remind everybody that these corner bracket type jigs are a must in my shop. They help out tremendously and they are my extra hands. Now I said earlier that this cabinet is going to be moved around a lot in the art studio. And this is the wheel set that I'm using. It's a high quality premium workbench casters. And two of them will go onto this cabinet. It's time to mount these wheels to the back of the case. And I have this template right here. Now this has to line up right with the floor. This is flush with the floor. I'm going to take a pair of scissors and cut right along the dotted line. That will make it a lot easier. Two wheels go on this cabinet and two wheels go on the bookcase section. It's joined together by that large panel that I built that's 36 by 72. And that way, as a single unit, it'll be able to move around. Then I'll be able to position that right there on that spot. And then I can mark the holes. And I can take my awl and mark right in the center of each of these tested these wheels out already and there's very little tolerance so this must be done exactly according to this template or this cabinet will not work or i should say the wheels won't work because when you have this in the down position the wheels are almost touching the floor and then when you engage the wheels so that the cabinet will move it only raises the cabinet just a very slight amount just to clear it off of the floor so that these um, cashers will operate and allow you to roll the cabinets. And now I have the holes. I can pre-drill these. Once all six holes are pre-drilled, then it's time to install the caster. Now one important note, you do have to remove the wheel. This wheel will not move sufficient to get it out of the way to allow you to put if a screw in place. So that is one drawback that you have to be able to keep in mind when you're installing this bracket. Once you have all three of the screws in on the bottom, this lever will flip down and allow you free access to be able to install all three screws on the top side. So no need to take that portion apart. Once you have all six screws installed, you can put the wheel back in. And all it is is just one bolt, so it's not a difficult task. Just slide that bolt through and it's held in place by a lock nut. So this is just a minor inconvenience, that's not a big deal, because this goes back together very, very quickly. And now that that's done, it's just time to move on. I've got three more of these wheels to be able to install. Oh, and by the way, they do include these wrenches that are handy to be able to put this together. It's now time to build drawers, and there's six of them to build. I have one four inch drawer at the top, and then two five inch drawers, followed up by three six inch drawers. Now the good thing is the width on all of these drawers are exactly the same. And that makes it easy because once I have all of my boards cut, then getting them to the proper length is very easy. I can just set the table saw up one time and make the cuts. Just as a reminder, I have that little stop block installed on the fence. 
you can see it clamped right there. And that's very, very important because that one small piece of wood clamped to the fence really does prevent the kickback. And that's a big safety feature in the shop. All the table saw work now is done getting these pieces cut to size. So I have my front, back, left and right for everything that I need. And I got to get all of that wood in to that cabinet and create the drawers. I have done videos before showing exactly how I make these drawers. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. This first step is to cut all the rabbit joints on the ends of each of the uh, wide length of the panels. And this is for the front and the back of the drawers. Now remember the front and back of the drawers are exactly the same length and that doesn't change by adding this rabbit joint. So this is one setup and I can do all of those drawers exactly the same. Here's a close-up of what the actual rabbit joint looks like and this is going to be able to allow the side panels to drop right in place and to give a good strong joint. With all the rabbit joints completed, it's now time to put in that groove across the bottom of each of the sides of the drawer. That groove actually receives the plywood bottom. It's time to assemble the drawer. And you notice I'm using the glue. I'm also using glue in that groove. Because this drawer is made out of plywood and the bottom of the drawer itself is also plywood, I don't have to worry about the wood movement. So I can put glue on all of the surfaces. The plywood bottoms were all cut at the same time and the nice thing about it is they're all exactly the same size. So I can just grab one, drop it in position, make sure that it's aligned correctly and then put the side of the drawers on. Of course I'm using glue again to be able to put that glue into the groove. I'm not sure what's going to be going into these six drawers. I'm going to assume it's going to be a lot of artwork and a lot of paper and a lot of different materials. So the weight is going to be a concern. I do not want these drawers to fail. Thus, I want to make sure, again, these are as strong as possible. And with not having to be concerned with the wood movement, I can put glue on every one of these surfaces. And that way I can be assured that this drawer is going to be absolutely the strongest possible. Now yes, I could go with a lot fancier joints, but I really don't think that's going to be necessary. I'm still trying to keep this very simple. Last step, I am using this staple gun. Now this is the 18 gauge one inch staple that I'm securing each of these corners with. The last step that I want to do before nailing in this last back panel is to make sure that it's square. Now I've shown this on a number of occasions. You measure from one corner to the opposite corner and make sure that you get the exact same measurement. Now on this particular drawer, this last side is not fitting into a slot. Rather, the plywood is sitting on top of that plywood. And that way I can nail that bottom piece of plywood directly into that drawer slide. That way it's very secure and it can't move at all. And that eliminates the possibility on any type of slippage or movement down the road from having the plywood in a slot. Because on this side, there is no slot. It's nailed directly into that bottom uh, drawer slide itself. Now if you watch some of my other videos where I've made drawers, I did not do that. This is the first time I have shown this method and this is a very strong method to be able to secure that panel and to make sure that this drawer will last a long time carrying a lot of weight. Well, all six of the drawers are now finished and I've got to get these from this location over into this location. To be able to install these drawers, I'm using this spacer at the bottom. Now I want to be able to have these drawers line up to that point right there. That's the center of the drawer marked and it's the center of that drawer slide. So I used these two pieces of plywood to be able to act as my uh, gauge to put this right where I want it. And then from there I can just ever so slightly pull this drawer out and put the first screw in. And this ensures perfect alignment. I don't have to worry about any problems at all by being able to do this method. And of course I have to do this on both sides of the drawer. Once this first screw is in, 
then I'll be able to continue to pull this drawer out a little bit further and put the middle screw in uh, position. And by keeping it right there over my spacer block, there's no chance that the drawer is going to be moved out of alignment. The second drawer is done exactly the same way. I put the proper spacing in to make sure that this is aligned exactly where I want it. And then I repeat the process. I'll pull this drawer out ever so slightly and put that first screw in. And this process will continue until all six of the drawers are installed. The final screw that's on the very back of the drawer will be installed later. It's time to cut the drawer faces. And the simplest way to do that, using a three quarter inch plywood. So the face of the plywood is three quarters of an inch. And it's a lot easier to be able to set it up and cut it this way with a circular saw than to try to set it up on the table saw. Again, for one person in the shop, this is going to be the easiest way. And I can get perfect cut this way. The only thing I'll need to do is just cut the proper length. After pre-painting and putting the uh, wood veneer edges on, it's time to install these drawer faces. Now I'm using a little scrap piece of wood. Now this is an eighth inch and I'm using my glue and tape method to be able to put these drawer faces on. Now this is so easy. It's just amazing. It only takes a small bead of the glue and again I'm using the Starbond medium CA glue to be able to install these drawer fronts on and with the spacer actually taped onto the um, to the drawer faces it makes it where one person again can do this very easily. I also have that spacer over on that left hand side to make sure that it's spaced exactly the way it needs to be. So I can push this into position, hold it there just for a few moments, and then it will be secured. And I'll be able to open up this drawer and remove those spacers. And yes, I could do this without the tape and glue it directly to wood to wood. But that also makes it where if I make a mistake, I can't change it. If I make a mistake this way, I can pull it apart and the tape will separate from the wood and I can redo it. If I did it the other way, just use the CA glue and glued it directly to the wood on wood, then I would not have that luxury in case I made a mistake. But this method works extremely well. And after just a few minutes, I have all of these uh, drawer fronts installed. Off camera, I did put three screws into each of these drawer faces to be able to secure this in place. So this cabinet is finished. I want to thank everybody for watching this video today. It was a lot of fun being able to put this cabinet together and show you some techniques that I have not shown you in some of the other videos that I have done. So if you like this video, by all means, go ahead, give me that thumbs up, and don't forget, hit that little subscribe button down there and the bell notification so that you won't miss out on the different videos that I'm doing. On each and every video that I do, I try to show you something new that I haven't shown before to be able to continue teaching you exactly how to do these types of projects in your own shop. I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the next video. So for now, bye-bye and can't wait to see you the next time in the shop.